welcome back to her Otley Boom podcast. My name is Min Huyen, and in this episode, this is a two-part episode. We gotta have to talk about the reclaiming powers. This is part two. This is about rape, fake powers, and ego il- 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 solution. Sorry, can talk. Um, we're gonna talk about sex. We're gonna talk about sexual powers. You know, some primal instincts, even crime, crime victims. And healing. So, if these are your topics, dive in. But discern before you continue because it could be triggering. So, all right, let me begin. I just want to say that um, thank you again for being here. The sexual needs, sex power, the primal instincts is indeed um, a crucial and an important part of a human experience. Like I shared in the previous episode, there's a two part of a human. That is the human part, where it's like the civil part in a way, and then there is the um, animal parts, where we're gonna celebrate each and every single piece in us. That I think is a huge part of self acceptance, and I have seen some presentation where the sex is fun, is mutual, there's consent, and it's realistic. You know, because everyone has sex. Um, the perfect people have sex. I mean, fit people have sex. And there's are not fit people who are messed up. And then there's people who are like me on this journey, who ten years ago didn't know where the fuck I am. And it's a part of this growing journey. So I think it's quite important to portray it realistically. But again, coming back to this episode, after digging up on all the Pornhub channels, I find that sex. Probably on the extreme spectrums in so many way, and I also speaking of my experience as a, you know as a minority and as a, as a Vietnamese person who I actually have been uh, was born and grew up in Vietnam. So my lens of intimacy and sex, as specifically, are probably a little bit different from people in the states. Um, but this is my taste. I feel like sex can be it's it's kind of like um, idolize can be too it can be a little bit extreme on the spectrum too much on the spectrum in a way too far leftist and rightist it can be we can celebrate it idolize or it's kind of be suppressed it's almost like we are ashamed of doing that and having it in a way. A very little presentation in the middle ground, where we consider just there's something normal. When it comes, we appreciate it, we take it as it goes, and when it's over, we let go of it. Um, I think that's a part of the reason why Japanese sex or porn specifically, and I would say like some part in Asian culture as well, the secrecy. Or sex in secrets, or the sex while being suppressed, especially with the woman, is kind of being portrayed that way. I know they're pay actor, which is good for them, and actresses. Um, but I think that's why that culture exists. Like you should not have fun, you should not have sex, or that kind of sex is not prohibited. So. When you are enjoying something that is prohibited or that, that that you should not do, there's a pleasure of doing the forbidden, right? Yeah, right. I think that's a good way to say it. So basically, breaking the rules is a pleasure in a way. So I think that is one way of portraying sex that I don't think it's healthy. Because you are now thinking of sex as something forbidden, like probably like, like the the Adam's apple in a way. You know, like when the in Christian when the snake goes in and specifically tell Eve not to eat the apples, and now that is the the sex that we should not have. That kind of thing. So I don't, I don't, I don't think that's healthy, and I don't think it's true. So I'm not. I'm not for that culture specifically, in a way. Speaking to my experience as an Asian woman, right? 
going back, my first episode, um, we talk about um, reclaiming the power. But I just I suppose to share as um as a survivor of of assaults and actually specifically sexual assault. I feel like a part of me was robbed and destroyed after that assault as as a victim. So in a very, very long time, I have to find my way back to myself. And I found what I found is that there's no self left because who I was, was were gone, basically. And everything I knew, everything I enjoyed, who I were as a person, lost. I lost a sense of self. Like I don't know who I were anymore, who I and then who I am anymore. So a very long time, I have that lost sense. So what I would say is that in order for you to heal from that experience, you would have to um, establish the new connection with yourself. To establish a new identity, which is which is quite crucial for any human on earth. Carry on to have a sense of self, know where you are, who you are, and where you're gonna be, what you're gonna do, what your sense of purpose. That's why you are here. Um, that is a crucial part of the healing journey. And to speaking about rape, I'm just gonna say it. I think after ex after experience sexual assault. And as a survivor, and as a healer, as a person who have to heal herself, and I have met so many survivors on this journey, because I'm not ashamed of speaking about the fact that I was sexually assaulted. Speaking up and shattering that secrecy that I mentioned earlier about the in Asian society where secrecy is a is a pleasure, is a form of pleasure in a way. Speaking up. Is a way of empowerment. Speaking up is a way of prevention, new crime to take place, to dismantle that system, that problematic system, or that um, egocentric system, the toxic masculinity system that I've been speaking about. Your voice does matter. Your opinion matters. And I think we know this, but we haven't practiced it enough. And I don't just say this because election is literally right around the corner. <laughs> but I think it's so important that we speak up and there's more people who are a crime victim survivor than you possibly know. Almost every woman I know experienced some level of abuse discrimination, even sexual um, abuse and assault in some way. And I would say women is even more likely than men to be sexual objectified. And the final word to say, if you don't have anything nice to say to a woman, please don't comment on the body because I think the social media and the media in general have done it enough. So, if you cannot contribute it to the empowerment of, of one person, then, you know, stay silence could be a good input. But sex, sex has been used as a form of tuition that we have silently accept. I think the PTD case and the Harvey Winston's have said it all. The Me Too movement has said it all. That we have silently, and even the victim themselves accept this is a way of living, a, la a way of getting in, a way of getting noticed. Sex has, a, has been used as a coercive tool in various industry. It's, it's, I call it a tuition. Music, film, um, government, corporate sectors, you name just a few, even for children, okay? That is so messed up. And we silently accept it because we, we the, va the devils and the angels, we want it so badly that we decided to sell our soul, per se. But we know, it's, we know it's not right. But what can we do about it? So how someone has not talked about it? 
I for a very long time was ashamed. And then I was ashamed. And I, was, I was ashamed myself. And I was ashamed by other people because of that experience. But that experience was not along, not at all my fault. And I don't think that's anyone's fault for that. But I think it's a it's still existing because we silently accepting it and still engaging with it in a form in Vietnam. I know that um, image is a thing like purity, purity, uh, virgins, being a virgin, it's still considered part of it is important. Um, it's your innocence. Mm. I would totally encourage people to go on figuring out your body. You need to know your body better than anyone in this world. Per se, your, even your husband, your partner, whatever it does. You need to know your body because it's your body. We spend time with ourselves more than anyone else in this world. Yes, well, in ideally most cases. So I think it's so important. But we, I think, are silently accepting it. So before I became, well, not before I became, but before I was assaulted, I never cared about it. I never thought that one day I would be a crime victim. It's almost like I thought it would happen to the rest of the world, but not me. That I would be safe <laughs> until it happened to me and I realized I'm not safe. Girls are not safe. People are not safe. And I met so many survivors. They are, we're not safe. And because not enough people are speaking about this enough. And we've always you silently going with it. That's a way to go with it. In Vietnam, I know for a fact people don't speak up because they don't want to get in trouble. The person who is assaulting, I mean, the perpetrator like PDD, for instance, and some people, they are powerful. They can pull strings. And they, you know, they, they don't want to be ashamed. Like their image has already been ruined and now they speak up, it's going to be ruined like double tech. So they don't want it to happen again to themselves. By snitching. But this is when I call in the power of numbers. That's why <laughs> That's why those people, the perpetrators, can carry on so long and assault so many victims. If one person speak up, they can attract so many followers who are also experiencing the same thing. Because I say, fearless, recognize fearless. Brave people recognize brave people. And to be brave, Sometimes you have to accept that you will be lonely, that you will stay alone for a certain period of time, you know, until someone also brave enough to stay with you. Meaning calling all of my outliers, the trailblazer, the rules breaker <laughs> out here to be brave enough to say something that is so out of the norm to speaking of your vulnerable experiences and to say that I'll die protecting this because it's mine, it's not perfect, but it's mine. I'm not perfect, but I deserve, you know, to be loved, to be cherished. And that's another thing I learned today too, that even though you are healing, and you're still working towards your goal, say, let's say you want to lose 10 pounds, and you haven't lost any pounds so far, or you probably gained two pounds. Even though you are on that journey, you realize that you're still deserving. Life is ever-changing. So let's say you do assume that you get to that goal. Most likely, you want to be a different person by that goal. You want to have a different goal by that time. So it's ever-changing to our needs. I think that that's why self-love is so important, that we love ourselves unconditionally. We love ourselves even though we haven't lost any weight, or even though we lose 10 pounds already. You know, we don't put a condition, now I lose 10 pounds, I have to lose the next 10 pounds. Uh, self-love doesn't work that way. It will be accepting who you are as the person right here, right now, with no conditions. 
and you're still improving yourself and you still work on yourself. That's a really good mindset to be on. So here is my second episode. I want to remind all of you that the sexual power, the creativity, your confidence that is yours and forever yours to have. And I want to read this paragraph for you. To reclaiming yourself, your sexual power, your creativity, and your confidence, you start by establishing a relationship with yourself. Your confidence can be shattered by the traumas you've been through. But to establishing the relationship with yourself, again, now think of you as another person that you like to get to know. Yeah, right? Like um, you're going on a date with someone and you want to explore who they are, what they like to eat. Um, what do you like to do in their free time? That kind of thing. I think that would be a good start to like start to explore your relationship with yourself after that relationship has been set shattered. And so you have no grounds to start on. That be that that was who I was when I was sexually assaulted. I completely lost that sense of self. And for a very long time, I keep trying to go back to who I was, like going back to the how that was burned. There was no, there, there's no place to live. If you want to have the house again, you have to rebuild the house from scratch. You will have to put up all the walls and all the decoration and you, then you can go live there. Uh, when you start working on yourself and re recreated that relationship with yourself, the trauma is most likely going to come up again. And sadly, it's going to be with you for the rest of your life. And I think it's a way to make peace with it, to accept that it happens. Even have to say that to forgive myself that it happens, to let the anger come in and to be angry. Fuck's sake. Yeah, be angry. Get the anger out there. When you are angry, there has to be an outlet. It's so important when you have anger and you have an outlet. Don't hold the anger in. It's toxicity, so do not hold it in. You have to have an outlet, whether it's creativity or an art or some way, shape, or form, go work out. But don't take an anger out on another person, animals, or plants. They are all living beings. They do not deserve your anger. But your anger needs a solution. That's for you. And for you, again, you are multifaceted beings. You are a shapeshifter. You are the creator. Now go and create your life with intent. Well, that's it. Thank you for coming to Heart Otley Blue. My name is Min Huyen, and we talk about avatar poems, art, self-love. My life is an art. If you like, subscribe for more. And thank you, and I'll see you soon.